What is up YouTube, uh, McIntyre here. Today I wanted to go over the hotfix notes for June 28th, 2017. Um, this is basically the patch right after Mathiel has been released. Um, so we're gonna see some changes hopefully to Uther and uh, Cocoon maybe on Anubarak. Uh, but we're jumping into the notes now. So the first change is gonna be a Genji nerf. Looks like at level four, Shrieking Master bonus damage reduced by five, which is substantial considering you throw three Shrikens and each Shriken deals an additional five damage. So that's a 15 damage nerf, which is pretty nice. Um, and then they have a buff to Dragon Claw damage required reduced from 375 to 330, um, and you do more damage on Dragon Claw. I don't think uh, I really don't think that Dragon Claw will be the talent that we take. Still Shuriken Master seems better. And a lot of the reason for that is that when you jump, you reload Shurikens, which I think is a really powerful uh, mechanic apart. So um, I still think Shuriken Master will be the, the choice, but they did nerf it a little bit. Uh, level seven, dodge. Cooldown increased from eight to 12. This is nice. Feels like a lot of the time Genji just always blocks autos. This will make that feel a little less like that. Uh, still a lot of the time with him, he's like a reset hero, but it looks like he's probably only gonna get three blocks in a team fight or maybe four, right? So that is pretty nice, but it still doesn't change his early game poke. Uh, so here's the Mathiel nerfs, hopefully. Uh, tormented souls. Cooldown increased from 80 to 100, which is nice. Basically, he's not just gonna be able to pop this off every single team fight. Kind of like what they did with Sank. Sank was really powerful and then they made it 100 seconds. It'll still be the go-to, but it's not everything. Um, at level four, throwing shade, cooldown reduction increased from two to four seconds, added functionality. Now also reduces the mana cost of Death Shroud on quest completion from 25 or from 50 to 25. So just to decreases the cooldown of your E um, by four seconds now instead of two, and you get a mana cost decrease. Just actually pretty nice. I, I, at first, like when this hero first came out, I was all about throwing shade and I thought it was the way to go. Um, but since the passive talent has just become more powerful and I still think it's it'll be more powerful. Um, although we're about to continue on. So ethereal existence, armor reduced from 15 to 10 per hero hit, maximum armor bonus increased from 45 to 50. So this is kind of nice, right? You don't have to just hit three people and then boom, all of a sudden you're 50% armor. Now, if you hit all five, you're 50%. Um, so you still get that armor and you probably still will take Ethereal Existence at 13. But it, it's not gonna be, you know, once you hit ult, you're gonna get the extra armor from your Tormented Souls and the armor there. But after the ult drops, you, you won't really have those, um, those resist, right? Um, inevitable end cooldown reduced from 30 to 20. So I think this is a CC um, The self cleanse. I still think this talent is just better. This is what makes you really tanky Memento Mori damage reduced from 180. This is really nice This talent was starting to get really out of hand especially with a level 4 talent like I just talked about so a nice little nerf to the damage there seems necessary and Reaper of Souls now passively increases the duration of Tormented Souls by one. That's kind of nice. I mean, this talent felt really bad. And a lot of the time you would just see um, the Mathiel's take the resurgence of the storm. So I think this is, this is pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll make you go R that R at 20, but it is a nice, like, you know, maybe you should take that 20 talent, right? Uh, we got some thrall changes heal amount increased. So they're buffing thralls passive. This is gonna be notable for sure uh, the extra 13 per proc um, Mana rolling thunder mana return increased from 10 to 12. This is the range talent level one Frost resilience this is the block talent level four heroes hit by feral spirit grant thrall three charges of the frost wolf resilience So that's pretty good, but I mean both of his other four talents are just so much better that I, I, I don't think that We'll see this talent taken, but maybe, I mean, getting the extra block charges is pretty good in lane, especially against certain heroes and matchups. Spirit Shield, this is our Spell Shield for Thrall. Cooldown reduction per Frost Wolf stack increased from 5 to 8. This is substantial. I think that Spirit Shield is probably a 50-second 50, 50 um, 
cooldown, I want to say, off the top of my head, maybe 60. But 8 seconds per proc, if you take Earthquake, you might proc off twice and get 2 spell shields in a team fight, which is, which is really good, right? Um, one thing that I wish they did with this ability is when your spell shield's down, you should be able to toggle it off. Because um, right now, it basically, if you're in a team fight and you, you toggle your spell shield to block something and it procs, and then you rebuild it passively, the second that you've built it back up, it'll immediately reproc, right? So you don't have a t you don't have a way to like turn it off and then reactivate it, which I wish they changed. Um, and then Windrush, they've just made it a longer blink. I still think it's probably the best 20. Um, Zeratul change, this is a sad one, but a necessary one. Bonus damage decreased from 50 to 40 on his 16. I still think he he's still a top hero. Um, he'll still get picked a picked a fair amount. He still has a void prison, so um, I I don't think this is terrible. This is just they're just trying to make it so Zeratul doesn't just like one shot everybody when he hits twenty. Zuljin guillotine change. So guillotine got just a flat buff, which is pretty cute. One hundred and forty damage and damage multipliers at extremely low health are decreased. So basically. Guillotine is now more like a poke. You can just throw it at 50% health. You don't have to cook it until you're, you know, dead, basically, right? So it multiplies on a percentage. So since it's flat increased, it should hit for a lot. This actually might be pretty good. The problem with Zuljin, obviously, is that he's just not good. But I do think that this talent is going to see more play now. And we also have a change here to Ensnare, which is nice, especially if you're going to go the Guillotine build. Um, in snare, it's now range is increased, so that's a very, very, very far range. Um, that's I'm trying to compare a skill to it. That's like almost like a stitches fishing hook range. So that's a really, really far range. I like the decreased cooldown. I would have liked to see that cook, that put down to like 30 seconds instead of 45, because at 30 you will at least get two in snares in one team fight. But I mean, this way you can ensnare guillotine, right? So the, the combo would be like, you ensnare them so they're rooted for three seconds, and then you, you sling your guillotine on top of their heads. So that's pretty cool. I like that, but like I said, I, I would've liked this to be 30 seconds instead of 45. This might be the same timing as guillotine, though. I think 45 is guillotine's cooldown too. All right, so we got Medivh, level seven talent, Raven familiar. Ravens created by this talent will now only attack heroic targets i actually really don't know what this talent is i'll be honest let's check super quick i think this is like little lilies little lily water dragons if the raven familiar joins allies that use a portal the raven will dive at the allies next basic attack that's pretty cool yeah, it's kind of like a like a water dragon, like a or not a water dragon, a, a little serpent that Lili has. Pretty cool. I don't think I mean Master's Touch is just too too good at seven, I think, but maybe we might start seeing some builds built around um built around this talent. The only problem is it, it looks like it only works the first time you go through, so like you can't go through, hit them, come back, go through, hit them, come back, and get that bonus every single time. But it could be like really good for just burst comps, honestly. You go in, everybody takes the portal, everybody has a raven, you just smash. We'll see, this this is gonna be a weird talent. I, I don't think I've ever seen it, but this seems like it, this might make it powerful. Um, Probius, pylon overcharge. No longer gives pylon bonus health. I like this a lot. I mean, pylon overcharge was the go-to talent and killing pylons was really hard and this is gonna make it much easier. Okay, so this is the biggest change. <laughs> And I think this change is actually absurd. Uh, I need to update my tier list for this patch. I'll probably do that today, honestly. But I think Brightwing got the biggest buff here. Uh, so Pixie Dust now. Um, the movement speed of your E is decreased by a second. It no longer grants block charges. And you grant spell armor for three seconds. And that's basically like a little mini um, Guardians of the Kings but you don't have to have a target cc you can just cast it whenever and then when it gets really absurd is at 13 with shield dust your pixie dust now grants an additional 50 percent physical armor on top of the spell armor so 
it's almost a Guardians of Kings without CC Ricard, right? And I think that that in itself is absurd and will honestly push Brightwing to like a, like a tier one support. Um, she was like right on the cusp of being really, really powerful. And we even saw her at, you know, uh, MSB and, um, and even in HCC we've seen her. So I think this this change is gonna push her, push her to the top, especially considering unlike Uther where he takes Guardians of the King at seven, Brightwing gets Shield Dust at 13 and she gets cleanse at 7. So she's gonna have Guardians of the Kings with clean cleanse cleans with cleanse. So I I don't know this seems really powerful plus her global uh, She has poly what a 1.25 duration. So yeah, this is a this is just a hundred percent wins this patch So we got Lucio changes who cares uh, Lucio healing boost amp it up healing increase from 14.5 to 15 so they added an extra heal they added a little extra healing on his w okay we got brightwing now though so uh and then at level 16 up the frequency cooldowns per basic attack increase from 0.35 to 4.5 i don't think i've ever seen anyone ever take this talent i'm assuming it's a battle momentum let's check really quick Seems like it's probably a battle momentum on your E that makes it last longer. Amp it up's mana cost is reduced from 100 to 80 and dealing basic attacks to enemies. Oh, so yeah, it's a battle momentum for your E. Eh, see what they say. The idea here is to kick, give back his intentional healing since we took it out so much of his passive healing away. This all uh, may also help uh, reverse amp, bring it up together pick rates on their tiers as well. I, I really don't think this is going to be substantial. I mean, basically they gutted this hero. Uh, his like level 1 healing before used to be the same as his now present level 10 healing. So if you think about it that way, it's really bad. Nice. Tacitar nerfs. Plasma shield. Lifesteal amount reduced from 45 to 40. So they took 5% off the flat lifesteal, which is nice. Um, they're trying to incentivize people here to take the Q talents. So first unlock shield value bonus increase from 15 to 20 and then second is 30 to 40. I don't think anybody cares about this. this isn't why we're taking the hero. Um, Templar's will though is a reason why. So damage bonus on first quest reduced. That's nice. 25% is a is a good chunk of damage. So that's a step in the right direction. And then here we go. Touching on calls embrace. Lifesteal 15%. So he lost a 20% total lifesteal, which is nice. I think I'm reading that right. I might be reading that wrong. I'm assuming if we lose, it might be 30 total. I don't know. I'm not, I can't really, I don't know how those numbers mesh together, but I think what this is saying is we're now getting 40. And then if you talent it, you would go up to, before you were at 45, you talent, you go to 90. Now you're at 40. And when you talent, you go to 75. So we're losing 25 total. Or 15 total, sorry, not 25. What am I talking about? Yeah, 15 total. Yeah, okay. So if you take the four talent, okay. Yeah, good. That's good. This is a good change. Really good. Um, we got the Uther changes. Uh, E talent. This is the basic attacks decrease your cooldown of your E. Um, after you finish a quest, I think you opt the auto like 50 times. Cooldown reduction per auto is to 1.5 now that's nice i mean 1.5 battle momentum on your e for ether is really really clean actually pursuit of justice movement speed increased this is a nice buff too these two pair really well um here we go guardians of king finally took a hit 50 percent still really powerful i mean i think as long as this talent exists it's going to be taken but it's not going to be overpowered right um i think that's the I think that's the real key here is that this is not overpowered now before if you stun the target and you put the damage into them uh, no matter how much damage you put in 75% of that damage was reduced and now you know only 50% is and that is substantial uh, you might actually be able to kill targets but it still will be strong and we got a Benny nerf Benny increased from 40 to 60 which is nice too seems like sometimes you get double Bennies in team fights so I'm glad they have been addiction all right, so we got a D.Va basic attack damage reduced, the nerf, nerf, 
nerf. Nice. So they just nerfed all our mech stuff. And they nerfed hit the nitrous. This is substantial. This talent was really good. Like really good. They're they're trying to get people to take other level ones. I still think you're gonna take this talent, but this was where a lot of Diva's damage was coming from. A lot of times when I play Diva, I'd kill people off of her Q charge. So this is this is substantial, I think. Um I will definitely hit, this will definitely hit Diva's uh, win rate. Um, so we got the Haka, probably nerfs. Basic attack damage reduced by five. It's a nerf in itself. Uh, brush Shocker cooldown increased, that's good. And we got to change the W to try to incentivize people to take the W at 13. Increase the damage of Dark Swarm by 40% while the Brush Shocker buff is active. This is pretty good actually. I mean on maps like uh, Infernal Shrines, um, BOE, uh, D Shire even um, you usually fight with move speed so I could see this map uh, this being picked but being map dependent I do like the mark personally as a Dahaka player I like the mark more because it increases the damage of my whole team including myself but we might see this I think this also gives you spell power or something so it gives you spell power and extra damage let's double check on that just so I'm not Okay, so before I think this gave you spell power when you came out of a brush. And now it just gives you 40% damage. So I, I still think that I still think that Primal Swarm is better because like if you look at Dark Swarm, it's gonna deal 50 damage. So this will be like what uh, I can't even think of the number like a 20 30 damage increase for dahaka and then you know compared to just increasing all your damage by 10 percent you're probably just still going to get more value off of primal swarm and you know obviously have primal rage a lot of people are taking that now too but yeah i don't know just uh they're, they're trying to get people to take this talent instead i think it's still trap talent but that's about it for the butt patch there's some they fixed the crummy bug uh, I don't know. Fixed an issue with Windwalk. They fixed Task Arc no longer use basic attack during. Okay, so that was a bug too. The task bug percent health damage dealt by basic attacks have to correctly count as ability damage. That's about it. Uh, so yeah, I would say the biggest winner is Brightwing for sure. Uh, Zuljin's Zuljin's pretty cool change. I'll, I'll have to test that out. I think Thralls. So this is a buff. Um, as far as winners go, I'd say Brightwing, Thrall, Zul'jin, uh, Tassar, Uther, and Diva are probably the biggest nerfs with, I'd say, Uther being the biggest. Yeah, but that is the patch breakdown. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to throw a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can always check me out on Twitch and Twitter. Those are going to be located in the description below. I appreciate all of your support. And again... Hopefully we'll see you guys on this next video. Till then, cheers. Take it easy.